you know that I've been on vacation and sick leave. Did, would you believe that I just got back <coughs> into Denver and began coughing? Hadn't really coughed anywhere noticeable uh, other than just a regular cough. Got back there, and uh, I believe that was uh, just about the first or second of January. And I, I've been in bed up and around trying to get well, but here I am, and I'm certainly glad to be in the house of the Lord. Blessed, blessed be the name of our God. Now, as I was uh, in my room thinking on some things, uh, and uh, this, this is the month that I'm reading and studying uh, the book of John. And I want to read to you my favorite part. <coughs> John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but was born of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Can you give God a hand? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now then, you know that I've been on vacation to visit my sister over in the L.A. area. We went by Knott's Berry Farm and got Arthur a chicken dinner. 
I think it was one little piece. (laughs) (coughs) Then we went on to President Reagan's library. And uh, how many of you have have seen the library? That that is really, it's really something. I couldn't hardly believe it. <coughs> but when I walked around on one side of it over there, they had the whole whole thing glassed in, and inside was the big jet that he used to ride around in. And I guess. They put the jet in there, and then they put up the glass. That's the only way I can figure it would work. (laughs) All right. Then we went on up to Solvang, and Solvang is the same as it's always been. (laughs) Then to Pismo, and then over to Fresno, and down to Visalia, where we decorated our family's uh, graves. And then we came on back. Then I've been sick for about three weeks. And my my legs are just a little bit weak still. So I'm a little bit weakly. Now on to today's word from God's word. And uh, as I said, or I think I said, um, that this month I'm studying the uh, book of John. And it's a great book. And as I was reading here last week, my daily reading in the book of John, I uh, begin to think about how that God had worked with the men from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, and how he loved them, and they would begin, in a great way, returning his love. And so, then I thought on the fact that uh, how is it that they gave God after he did great things for him and they were right with him, and then they would begin to lose a little bit of what they had gained. And as I thought on these things, how that they had a hard time remaining true to God, would start out in a mighty fervency, but then they would move and move away from him and forget all the goodness and the things he had done for him. And uh, of course then the reading that I had for you is of the Lord Jesus Christ and how that when he came What came strongly to me, these were his people that he came to, and they gave him such a terrible time. 
those who should be loving and praising him. So, in chapter 9 of the book of John, <coughs> Jesus, the one spoken of in this reading that I made for you in chapter 1, Jesus and his disciples were walking one day and they saw a man blind, a blind man. And uh, when his uh, disciples saw that he was blind, they turned to the master and they asked him, who did sin? This man or was it his parents that sinned and he was born blind? So Jesus answered them and said, Neither this man or his parents have sinned, but this was done that the works of God should be made known in him. In other words, God let him be blind that Jesus could come by to set him free. Can you say praise the Lord? So Jesus, after saying this, he did it in a funny way this time. Of course, he had healed the other blind eyes. But he spat on the ground and made a clay mixture from his spittle. And then he went over and he put it on the blind man's eyes. And he said, I want you to go to the pool of Siloam and there to wash that which I have anointed you with. So he sent him to the pool and he obediently went and he washed the eyes that Jesus had anointed in the water. And he was miraculously, his eyes were open. A great miracle Jesus had done for him. And then he quickly returned back to where he, uh, Jesus had anointed him and the people that had uh, seen him there, those who had seen him as he begged, were startled and said, Is not he that sat here and begged alms from us? Some said yes. Others, well, it looks like him. So he he just spoke up, sent it to the side, and they were all talking about him. He just spoke up and said, it's me. It's a, it, it, it is I. I am him whom you are talking about. And yes, I can see. And they said, well, how can you see? How can this happen? Right in front of them. He replied, a man that is called Jesus. He spit in the clay or the dirt and made clay and anointed my eyes, told me that I should go wash in the pool of Siloam, and I did, and I washed 
my eyes open, and behold, I received my sight. Well, where is he now? I don't know. I, I have no idea. So they took him and brought him to the Pharisee. And, and I sort of wanted to point that out because these were the religious people who started out religious, but with time they moved away from the original. And in moving away, they forgot all the principles of their mighty God. And they had their own. Their own ways of looking at things. But they were the religious leaders at that time. Pharisees. So they brought him to this Pharisee because they couldn't understand what was going on. And the Bible says it was the Sabbath day. And you may remember that in the Jewish time, the times of Jesus, the Pharisees and the religious people believed no work could be done. So the Pharisees ask him, how have you received your sight? Like he knew. So he told them, a man called Jesus, he put clay on my eyes and told me to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And I did. I washed, and now I do see. Some said, well, that man is not of God. If he's opening eyes, doing work on the Sabbath, others how can a man that is a sinner open blinded eyes? There was a division between the Pharisees. So they asked the blind man, what do you say about it? He said, well, I guess he was a prophet. But it happened just like I told you. And they said, go and ask his parents, his mom and dad. And they said, yes, this is our son. We own him. And he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we know not. And then they just said, he is of age, ask him. So they called him back and said, surely this man is a sinner that you are talking about because it's the Sabbath and no one does works on the Sabbath day. This is where I'm pointing out to you they moved away from the love and the joy of their religion. And as I sat there and thought on these things, I thought, well, there had to be a time they made that first little move away. And that would prove their devastation.
they called him back and said, this man is a sinner, and he's not supposed to do work on the Sabbath day. So he just looked them in the eye and answered them. Whether he be a sinner or not, we don't, I don't know. I know only one thing is where I, I was blind, but now I can see. That's just a fact. The Pharisee, so the Pharisees, they cast him aside. But then Jesus passed that by again to where he was and asked him if he now believed on the Son of Man. Then yes, who is the Son of Man? And Jesus said, you're talking to him. And he said to him right away, yes, Jesus, I believe. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Now as I thought on these events, and of course at that time, early part of January, this Christmas season had uh, been celebrated and all the movies that were on there, and I think I watched every one of them, even though they had the same story of the Christmas story. The events of Mary and Joseph and those Jews Herod the king who wanted to kill the young son and who killed all the other babies. You see how they started a little bit to move away from their mighty God. And they wound up the king of the Lord's people killing all the babies while he was trying to kill Jesus. These were Jews. These were God's people who had moved so far away that they would indulge in killing young children as we dedicated today. Then I thought on how God call, called them out of Egypt in the first place. Taking them out of Egypt, rolled back the Red Sea, that they might go over on dry land. Fed them in the wilderness each morning and gave them the water when they cried for it. Then, as he communed with Moses on the mountain, they rebelled and made a golden calf, something to worship. God told Moses, after he had come back down, he said, this is what I want you to do with these people. I want you to line them out across the bottom of the mountain. Put a rope across it. Anything that gets on the side that I'm going to be on will die. Gather them all 
on the hillside. You could just sort of feel that God was so disappointed in them. And he says, I'm going to address them myself. And in a cloud of thunder and lightning, the voice of God spoke out to his people. Spoke directly from them, from the dark, dark cloud. And what did they do? They got scared and they ran off. They stood a long way off. Moses, you talk to us after you talk to God. No more of this face to face for us. In other words, the thunder and the lightning and the dark cloud and the great and mighty voice directly from Almighty God, they couldn't take it. And they said, Moses, you talk to God, and then you come and tell us. So then they proceeded on to go into the promised land, the twelve spies. Their faith wavered, except for Joshua and Caleb. And God became so angry, he passed judgment on them right there. No one over the age of 20 would be allowed to go in. They all died and were buried in the desert. And as I thought on these things, God's Spirit began to move. And I became a little scared myself in my room. And then I thought on how His people of old started fine but the passing of with time they moved away from God and time 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 again farther and farther away so finally they became those people of the Pharisees who didn't even realize their Savior when he came to them. Then I begin to think on present day Christians, and especially us, our church. We're knit together by God's Spirit. God has moved upon each and every one of us. But I begin to wonder, was God letting me know that even in this day and time and under these circumstances, we too, can take that first little movement away from him. Remember that time when he filled you with the Holy Ghost, the mighty God of heaven coming down to an individual, giving them his spirit, letting them speak in an unknown tongue, as a sign that, hey, I'm in here. I'm with you. We totally are bound together by God's 
we need help, someone is there to give us a hand. We need prayer. The three partners of mine, they came over to the hospital and they prayed for me. A great time. Let's give them a good hand. If we need help, we're there. We need prayer, we're there. Whatever the need, we're there. We must have concern one for another. Because if you keep moving farther and farther away from God, just that first little step, no. If you feel like that you've moved away a little, fix it. Call out to God once again. That same God that gave you his spirit, he'll refill you. We have to stick together. This old world is rocking and reeling and no telling what's going to be a next week or a next week or a next month or a next year. It's God. He is our shepherd. He loves us. He called us. He filled us with his spirit. And we will stand strong with one another. Or we will fade away as a group. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Let's all stand.